It's been wet and windy the last couple of weekends, but anyhow, I'm determined to crack on with some development work for my garden railway. Indoors today, I'll concentrate on getting on with the stonework relief feature added to the concrete shuttering featured in the last video. I have considered some ways to create the stone shapes onto the cast concrete structures. About six years ago, I did a trial of a cast cube of concrete to include some stone or brick courses, an arch and a window. This little block of concrete has been left outside for six years and the surface features with the acrylic paint has stood up very well to the English weather. I plan to do the same technique to create a stone block effect on the bridge and embankment walling. I've thought of two methods of making the relief detailing ready for sticking on to the inside of the shuttering woodwork. The last time I did this to make the cube I laser cut some card. This time I had another go at that and also used my 3D printer to make the same out of plastic. So as another test I decided to make up a simple concrete cube with the laser cut cardboard block design on one side and the 3D printed plastic on the other. I used some Pritt stick glue to fix the block work layout onto the MDF pieces ready for assembling to form a box to fill with concrete. With the box assembled, I made up a small concrete mix. I thought I'd make it up good and strong with a 50-50 mix of cement and sharp sand, and then a good bit of water to make it run nicely into the stone relief shape. I used a stick to plunge and push out any air bubbles, so I expected this to turn out as well as the test cube I did those years back. Back indoors, avoiding the rain, I set to work with the drawing out of the stone block panels. The basic routine is easy. I first measured up the size of each of the walls formed by the wooden shuttering. 
For each, I then drew out on paper full size the outline of the shapes. Within these, I then drew out the basic grid of stone blocks. With the layout of the blocks worked out to fit around the curved arches and the angles of the walls, I used a black sharpie pen and hand drew the lines of the joints between the stone blocks. By hand drawing these, I would naturally include some variation to the joint lines and width. All these took a few hours, but by the end of the evening, I had a set of drawings ready for the next stage of work. I scanned the sheets to create JPEG files with sharp black and white 300 dpi quality. Each of these I then imported into a CAD program and used some basic tools to create the line work ready to send to the laser cutter. Fortunately I have access to a laser cutter at work so I spent a couple of hours after work to cut some 2mm cardboard panels. Some of these I needed to cut twice, but others, like the outer and inner pieces of the arches, I needed several copies. The laser beam cuts along the line sent to it by the CAD software. Whereas I drew bold lines with my Sharpie pen, I used the CAD software to convert these to be thin lines at the edge of the bold lines. Thus, the laser cutter cuts around the stone blocks and leaves a thin joint strip. I have to confess though, watching the laser cutter buzzing around the lines is quite captivating. Back home with the panels already cut out, the next phase of this project is to glue the card panels to the wooden shuttering. I began by removing the little bits from the panels which will form the stonework joints. The sooty edges of the card panels made for a messy handling of the bits. I have a set of the arch piers which includes the overarch sections. These link together with a repeated pattern so the stone effect continues over each arch. The panels are quite fragile and I have to handle them carefully. Each piece I drawn with some spare width so I set to work on each to trim and fit them. The sunken arches in the walls formed on the woodwork here by the sticking out wooden curve pieces will have similar stone patterns stuck on too.
All the trimming, sticking and working on the stonework pattern took rather a long time. I'm just hoping that it gives the effect I want. Unfortunately, the weather and time is against me today, so there's no chance to put the shuttering in place or to mix and pour the concrete. That will have to wait until next weekend. I just hope the weather improves. I want to open up the test block, which I cast last weekend. Seven days after mixing, I expected this to turn out really nicely, but worryingly, that didn't happen. As I pulled off one side, I found the concrete had not set properly. I'm not sure why, as I'd expect it to be solid after the week. Thinking back though, the mix I did was near a 50-50 of sharp sand to cement and was quite runny, so maybe that's why it didn't work so well. I usually do a mix of nearer one cement to four parts sharp sand, so maybe I just messed up with that. Anyway, I'll leave the other side on for another week and see if it sets any better by then. To finish this time, I've included a quick high view of the track line in the area of this project. Lots of leaves to deal with too. In the next video, I'll be installing the wooden shuttering, mixing and pouring the concrete and ready to move on. Thank you for sticking with this update and I hope you've enjoyed this episode as part of the recent series. If you have any suggestions, ideas, comments, please do take a minute to add them in the comments section below. I've added some notes in the description below too, so take a look there for more background information. Thanks for watching and bye for now.